Mayev up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he like, what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. Welcome everybody to the stream. Here we have Division A, a few loose screws. Well, it's just a few loose screws versus Regen Ghost. Um, both these teams, I think, sitting in about the middle of the pack of the division. Let's actually go over the standings, which I'm sure you guys got a good look at prior to the start of the cast. But we'll go over them just quickly here. Wipe them again. No, we're looking a few loose screws at number 12. So they're at the bottom. Pretty much um, just uh, before one spit and thrice by he was withdrawn. And Regen goes to sit in right about sixth position. So a win here could help. Um, sorry, fifth position. Um, could help them overtake. Um, well, just fall in right behind Holson Halfwits at the number four position. Um, and a win for uh, Fuelous Screws could potentially put them uh, right about behind in too deep. So. Um, you know, they could just at least start a bit of the climb. Uh, we have our... Oops, wrong one. Uh, map selection. We... Feel the screws did lose the coin flip. Regen Ghost took first pick. Um, and then we've got the bands, which on the blue side is uh, Altrak and Sky Temple. Two big maps out of the way. And on the side of Regen Ghost, they took out Braxis Holdout and Towers of Doom. And you can probably hear me talking to myself. <laughs> Being bugged by the cat too as well. All right, let me pop in here and just see if everyone is ready to go. And I think I actually have everybody set properly. TK Salt and the Doctor. But he kind of left. Apparently got kicked out. <laughs> by his own teammate, by... <laughs> for that matter. Um... Yeah, this is correct. What we have here is DK Salt. The Doctor. <laughs> the Doctor sounds like... I always want to uh, hear it as, um, was it Wesley Snipes in the original Mission Impossible? No, 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 it wasn't. Um, it was, uh, The Mask. <laughs> There's the guy that called himself the Doctor. Yeah, 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 but... I don't know. That's the one that comes to mind. Well, I guess we're going right into it, though. Didn't quite get the opportunity to say ready, but it's all good. I was ranting about the mask, so it's totally fair. And here we go. We have audio. We do. The question is, do I have audio in game? I would say we don't, so that's gonna fix that. Alrighty then. So Greymane and Mayav have been removed so far in the draft. I'll bring up the stats for a couple of those and see how they've been performing here in Division A. Greymane is the one that I feel most interested in as it was a first ban option and he's kind of a new addition to up there. Like Mayav being in the bans is not all that surprising, though it has fallen off as of late. Um, but the Greymane uh, 
stats weren't as good as you would think considering but 40 percent still reasonable it's not it's out of like the good win rate i would say between 45 and 55 percent but uh it's not far off i am doing pretty good though so far i bet you anduin is also pretty low and i know diablo has fallen off in most divisions i'm actually curious about a Yeah, 29% win rate. Still picked quite regularly at 60%, but 29% win rate. Versus something like Johanna, which I am sure in almost every division is performing well. Sitting at a 59% win rate. The 96 participation, so that's pretty much the best tank. And as we see, and is predictable, is right there um, at the top of the draft. ETC is also quite viable right now, and we'll see if that gets picked up. But so far, not the case. Temple Art is going to pick up the Johanna. And on the other side, we're going to get Kael'thas Stukov. Now, and it is Infernal Shrines. Um, this is a map where both heroes, uh, I do, do tend to get value. Rip out. So. Wipeout's not here. There we go. So, on the side of Regen Ghost, we see an immediate pickup of Sylvanas Ana. I like both those picks. Sylvanas and Ana should both be sitting at high win rates in this division. Yep, 54% for Ana. Sylv. Is at 56. On this map in particular, I really like the way that that amplifies the objective. And Nano Boost on Sylvanas is actually pretty good, um, especially with certain builds. We're going to get the ETC, as I stated before, probably one of the best remaining tanks. And his win rate actually reflects that, too, as well. The Doctor's going to pick up Kerrigan. I like the Kerrigan pick. Now, it, it can be flexed to an off lane selection, which is risky. It does limit your, your front line because like, it becomes conditional. Kerrigan's survivability is very conditional versus other heroes, which is more base kit. It's all about her ability to get stuns and get shield built up through damage, which takes time. Um, or at least being enabled long enough to do that. We're going to see Cupid Missile pick up the Rainer. Tweet. On the Blaze. Um, I like Blaze. I think he's under underpicked. But I also think that he's a hard hero to get a great value out of unless you really know the hero. Um... We did see Chen, so Kerrigan will be the initiator on top of ETC, which is a lot of chain stun, and uh, we do have great follow-up damage in the form of Kael'thas. He's got good burst. Uh, there are better heroes for, for that type of kill pressure, but I think it's it's fine. It works good. Um, and Chen's going to be decent at diving things like Sylvanas and Ana, so I like the Chen pickup. I was saying Blaze is good, and if played well, can definitely help save those targets as a good place bunker We'll keep them alive. But that is going to be our rosters for, or sorry, our drafts for right now. Uh, do shout out in the chat. Can you pop that up? Um, yeah, anyways. <laughs> Tell me in the in chat who you think is going to come out on top with these drafts. Uh, I think there's arguments for both. There's a really strong early game for the side. A few loose screws here. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the damage potential of Sylvanas Rainer cannot be understated. It is huge. They've got good wave flare in both Johanna and Blaze. <laughs> I will. Alrighty, then. We're going to start off this game here. On the blue side, we have Fuel the Screws, a cash playing Kael'thas, 
Ragnarok on the Chen, Lompico playing the Stukov, the Doctor playing Kerrigan, and DK Salt on the ETC. On the other side of the map in the red, we have Regen Ghost, Cuban Missile on the Rainer, Shriv playing the Ana, Zulkin on the Sylvana, Shui playing the Blaze, and Temple Art on the Johanna. So let's see about the opening the the opening handshake if any of the teams really commit to anything here or if it's just going to be a bit of posturing looking to see if they can get that wave clear i mean that's generally when the fight does occur we do have a kerrigan um which means if she finds any backliner in this opening engagement it could be a kill but you know it, it's risky to go in that early to da damage i'll quickly pop up the um the talent screen for you there. We do see, again, a lot of pressure being applied to Cuban Missile. He does get uh, a good heal up there by Ana, plus his own self-healing uh, to do the trick, but that was very near a kill. Um, I don't see anything too crazy here, just some indicator of what we're going to be getting into the late game. Uh, block Party instead of Prog Rock, so not looking for the stacking healing, but more of just the reduction in physical damage. Um, and I think that that's a, a decent pickup. They do have two heroes that rely quite heavily on auto attacks to do damage. Um, both Sylvanas and Raynor uh, really thrive in that zone. So having Block Party here I think is good for him and for the team. Uh, well timed out. Uh, it'll be it'll be nice to have. But we do have two fast auto attackers. So. Given the fact that both of them can kind of open up to do the fire, that 75 damage is only going to go into stall out so much. And that's one of the major issues I do have with any type of block. Cuban Missile does it push down pretty hard and is just trying to kite himself out of terrible danger. But Lompico walks up and does the backhand with Stukov and to get the kill. But ETC was a little bit overcommitted. Um, and the rest of the damage goes in, but a nice combo onto Zulkin is going to secure that kill. That's a two for one for... Um, a few loose screws uh, in the opening exchanges in this game, and they're actually about a half a level ahead, which is really good um, place to start. Shui and Ragnarok dueling up here in the top line, but uh, you know, a few loose screws. I really like the draft and um, and the fact that they aren't getting good early value out of this. The two camps pushing into the mid lane, they have actually dropped a full front gate and two towers. Now, unfortunately, RNG has declared that it will not be going mid lane and will be in fact starting in the top. So unfortunate that you can't get immediate value off of this, but just this much damage nice and early like that is it can be potentially very good, especially since the second objective could very well be there. And actually I'm gonna take a look to see what type of shrine we've got. Um, I guess there's no indicators before it actually pops. So we'll pop back up in 10 seconds and take a look you guys have seen all the talents for a little while. We'll, we'll go back and discuss a couple of those things. Like possession on this map, I think there's plenty of camps here and lots of good reasons to take a Mercenary Queen. Uh, in which case, I, you know, I don't think using solo kill win rates to, to establish any sort of argument is the way to go. <laughs> um, on this map, at least, at the very least, you can argue that uh, the passive bonus from possession is not going to get nearly the value that, um, you know, uh, combined pickups of camps and good pushes can get you. But we'll see. You know, in the end, I may be wrong. Maybe that subtle trickle of extra damage onto walls is going to be the, the the little bit of advantage that we need to win this game. Who knows? I could be wrong. And, and I'm often so. So... <laughs> And uh, instead of worrying about the objective, we're going to see uh, Regen Ghost instead just look to macro siege the map. We do have DK Salt down here just to try to stall out any major shenanigans. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't fully commit to this. Um, as they are going to come up for the defense, which is fine, but really I think pushing in with Black Arrows against ETC was perfectly viable with four people. really think that Regen Ghost didn't pull the trigger on, the, on, on that split focus there. And uh, I think it might cost them here because we're going to see a full pressure here now. Only Chen is split. Rainer is split to match, which means they don't have, like, consistent poke damage onto this. The only saving grace about this Punisher and why it's not going to get more damage than it did was that it was a Mortar Punisher and not a Frozen one. 
Uh, but here's going to be a kill, perhaps, on Johanna. She has nothing left. Anna has to keep her alive. But instead, it is ETC that stayed too long. And now the overextension is starting to come out. We see the uh, regen ghosts do turn it around and at least get some value out of a re-engage here. Uh, Chen was split. They pulled Rainer up. And uh, getting that um, that kind of odd man advantage there did allow them to kind of turn on the gas and uh, look for some kills. So it, it did end up actually going pretty well for them there, at least. But if you do look at the structure damage, this fort was almost completely gone. And you could have said that just staying down there during that whole objective and pushing hard into this into an ETC, Regen Ghost probably could have done very much the same. Look, we actually see them doing that exact same thing here. They took this front wall with almost no contest, and they even have three people rotate up to the top lane. So I'm kind of surprised that they're not committing more to this. Um, Chen is getting a full wave pushed in without any soak. That's going to be pretty painful to take, and we're going to see... Actually, a uh, few loose screws go for a good macro play themselves and say, hey, we can snipe this down, get trickle experience. Uh, dropping these forts early in the game is way more beneficial than allowing them to sit for long. Um, if you're if you're going to get early forts, that trickle experience can actually add up for you. And if you have a lead already, um, as long as you don't like feed away a bunch of kills like they did kind of do in the top lane more time or many more times, uh, you know, that extra that extra damage on that top lane is going to help them secure and continue to have a slight advantage in the experience. So despite a good fight for regen ghost on an over an extension from a few loose screws, I think we have a pretty good macro advantage here for the side of a few loose screws. There we go. Bring back up the talent screen so everyone see. And yeah, we're basically going to go down the queue build. The only variation is that it didn't go Merc Queen. We'll see. We'll see if that like extra bit of possession, you know, if you can, if you are able to peel off and get the value in enough times, I can see that maybe working, but it just can't be cleared by the enemy team immediately. If you're doing that, then it's, it's not going to get nearly the value that you want it to. So Shui and Chan back to fighting up here. Um, you know, Blaze, I think, uh, when this lane is cleared up here, doesn't need to stay there. Uh, one big thing he has a, a advantage over with then Chen is the fact that he does have a lot of slows, a lot of wave clear. Um, and that was a good pickoff by Regen Ghost. I like them identifying that Chen was overextended in the lane. Uh, he was pushed up basically to this side of the map, and that is always a scary place to be. Uh, Chen is good at diving forward and over enemy heroes. He's not great at getting back to his own base and he waited way too long to pop uh, panda pals there once he realized he'd overextended and started the retreat he uh just saw that earlier just drop panda pals make sure that you don't die there um it's probably still better than taking the death but you could argue that not dropping a 90 second cooldown might be the right call too as well so and that is true he did just take the kill he didn't he did try to go for it though so we can't say it was calculated <laughs> in the end it might have worked out better for him that he died there before he got it off <laughs> Because they do have a slight alt advantage still, just for a tiny second, we have mind control. Um, and I think that's all right. And actually, we're going to see value come out of it here. They did get the interrupt onto the mosh pit right away. But ETC again getting picked off. And I think this is like the second or third time we've seen this from him. Three times so far that ETC has died. And I think the, that he's not picking his engagements very smart. Uh, in a lot of these situations, he's moving in. 1v5 before the rest of his team is actually postured to follow up on any of the CC and as soon as he's in there He just gets to just kind of wrecked. Uh, thank you Mark zombie for showing up with the raid I appreciate bringing people into the chat. Thank you so much um, Welcome everybody that's making over to the we're just getting started here with regen ghost versus a few loose screws And up to this point I would have said that a few loose screws was actually ahead But that ETC death with the mosh pit there is uh, was a pretty big loss, and anytime you lose the objective to a Sylvanas on this map, uh, you are going to get punished for it. Now they do have a slight advantage, or um, you know, a, at least a good thing going for them here in the top lane uh, with this Bruiser camp getting a keep wall. But that's what we're going to get from Regen Ghost minimum here on this side. So in the end, they were behind. Now they are probably slightly ahead. Regen Ghost turning things around, making those kills count for something. You know, the pickoff of Chen up here, and then getting that ETC pick here. Uh, all great indicators of where you see momentum swings happen. Um, and Chen has to be ca careful again. They do have Riptire. They do actually even drop, or not Riptire, Blessed Shield. 
and they do have mind control, which is what they kind of throw in. I, I think they were expecting the Blessed Shield to go out, uh, and it didn't go out, so that would have been a really good combo. I think if Blessed Shield come out, mind control hits there, and I think they easily pick off a Chen with that. Um, so maybe sometimes just identifying where you can where you can pull the trigger uh, will help win, you know, those types of engagements. And Regen Ghost kind of missing a small opportunity there to press their I think for it. Thank you, that greenfish as well. I know that you typically cast with Mark Zombie, so you're just coming on over, but I appreciate the raid nonetheless. Uh, using the E, we do have a remorselessness pick or remorseless picked up by. Sylvanas, which I like this build. Uh, I mean, I love this build. I know it's the most standard thing ever, but giddy up right now with the movement speed increases is insane. Uh, your ability to kite targets with that pick is just... Uh, <laughs> it's really, really good. It does a whole lot. Um, he was already great at ranging and, and kiting. Uh, this talent makes him like a god at it. There's almost nobody in this game better than him. Uh, Vala is probably the only exception because the movement speed increases plus her health changes does make Vala a more viable pick these days. Plus her wave clear is actually better than Mainers. Um, though her, because of that her uh, <laughs> her uh, mana sustain is significantly worse. But uh, Reyna can still run out of mana too. In fact, I'm surprised keeping Missile State keeps his mana bar so high. Uh, maybe I'm just commenting on it now in the sense that he's already gone back and like tapped or something a few times to keep that thing high because Rainer should just be you know, eventually burning through that mana bar. <laughs> it's not as fast as other heroes, but... Yeah. At least that's what I think. Rotation coming down. We did see a bit of macro attempt there by... Um, few loose screws. They did try to see if they could get a nice attempt on the oil on the Kerrigan. Mounted though, it's hard to hit, but EDC looking like he might get picked off again. And again, look at the block. The value is just not really getting what you like to see. There's a Blessed Shield follow up, and that's going to be two kills. And this is the power of Blaze. He's the best, absolutely best warrior in the game for follow up CC. He, there's no one better than him. Because if he lands that CC, you know, he's got the slows, which help guarantee it. And if he lands the stun and anyone is close enough, it's a two to three man stun, which not a lot of abilities in this game give you a full, um, you know, a full duration of a stun from, uh, you know, from an AOE ability outside of ultimates. Um, and that's, I think, generally what makes Blaze such a threat. Is that you just, you just can't be getting hit by his jet propulsion. It really sucks to... If someone can block it out and only one person gets hit, its value is extremely, you know, limited. But at the same time, it's still a long stun on one target or on three targets. It's still good. Like, Blaze is fantastic. Plus, well-placed bunkers just can absolutely save teams, especially when you see dive happen. And that's one thing that we haven't seen Fulu Screws really bring out onto the table here uh, is the ability to actually dive in. But here is the contest over the Shrine. 20 already picked up by... Uh, region ghost, but again that mind control combo, but that is a huge Four-man mosh pit by DK salt the bunker came out to attempt to save his teammates um, And uh, it was just unfortunately not in a position or at a time that really could help out It did help Shui. It was a well-timed bunker, but the positioning of it wasn't anywhere where it could help his allies, but uh, Surprisingly though, they only killed Rainer off of that as good as that mosh pit was um, and that's the power of ETC that we're seeing here and why he's being taken so much more frequently is his ability to just change team fights. But that one pickoff could cost them, but no, there's the follow-up stun from DK Salt. And now we're seeing the backliners kind of get picked off here. Uh, Sylvanas goes down. Shriv, I think, barely gets away. Nice stun by Shui. But because there's no fort here, he might have overextended, and I think it was completely unnecessary for him to go for that stun. Uh... Anna was basically away. I don't think that they were going to catch her um, at that position. She was close enough to the keep that running there would have still been safety. So, again, we see it. a momentum swing it has occurred here. That mosh pit from DK Salt setting up a lot of chain staggered deaths against Regen and Ghost, who are starting to lose control of this game. Um, and the top keep went down, so even thinged out structurally, we do have a frozen punisher and the problem with frozen punishers i've said here before is the fact that because they stall out 
the damage from the objective. They stay alive much longer, and they're always a threat with this big stun. We see the jump coming up from the Punisher, putting on top of Johanna, but it is, in fact, the change uh, direction onto Cuban Missile. The stun did come out, but there wasn't any initiator from ETC prior to it, so they couldn't quite lock him down to get the damage in. They needed to get the kill. I think if the follow-up is a little bit better there, it, they definitely do kill him, but the... Uh, Panda Pals get stalled out. Great three-man pull into two-man stun. And that's probably going to actually end the game here. Feel the screws finding the kills really quickly. The shields are gone. The damage is done. Ragnarok will get poked out, so they might be able to stop this from being the end of the game. Zulkin dodging bout, dropping the bomb onto Shriv, but does survive. So luckily, Regen Ghost here have not, com have not lost this game. They do stop the core from going down any further. They are still down two heroes. And that means if you lose screws is going to have the advantage when it comes to the level 20 talents on the next objective. But Regent Ghost is not completely out of this. Keep in mind, bottom keep is gone. If they win any late game team fight from this point on, they very well could also turn around and end this game. So it is not out of their hands yet, but they do need to take a 5v5 prior to level 20s being picked up by Fuel Lose Screws. And Fuelous Screws at this point with two keeps down in the mid and top lane uh, can kind of just clear bot lane, avoid fights. But here comes the engagement. Uh, Johanna getting in there, trying to force this out. We see the stun combo, Blessed Shield into Mind Control coming in. And that is a kill onto Kerrigan. Exactly what Regen Ghost was looking for. Realizing they need to actually end this game. They're looking for more kills, but unfortunately, that's not going to be enough. They will have to send Shui back and probably Zulkin now back to the core as we have a bruiser camp and two catapults pushing up the mid or the bot top lane mid lane has two catapults and a Kazer camp um, and both of those things have to be cleared now the thing is is that the the waves are cleared up to them which means soaking for um few loose screws at this moment is basically bot lane uh, they cannot go onto this side of the map and knowing that that's the case and knowing that they're down, down a man, even if they get 20 here, which they do by picking up the camp, if we get a good initiation and there's a mind control onto uh, ETC, can they kill him fast enough to make this work out? Ragnarok does get a drop onto Anna, does get the follow-up from Panda Pals. The silence comes out, picks off both Sylvanas and Anna, and now Raynor goes down. This is the end for Regen Ghost. Game number one is going to be going in the hands of... A uh, few loose screws picking up the victory here in what many would call an upset from the last place team. Fifth seed versus 12th seed, and the 12th seed's going to walk into Infernal Shrines and absolutely get the victory. Uh, it was back and forth throughout that game. There was definitely no clear winner from the start, and uh, Regen Ghost definitely were, is still in this game all the way up until that fight. Um, they didn't get the pick onto ECC. The follow-up damage was just too much. The Chen Panda Pals followed by that silence from Stukov. And it was just it, you know? Three go down almost immediately. And then the follow up, uh, Mosh Pit, the Circuit of the Kill on Johanna was enough to just finish it off. And that's the end of the game. GG. Game number one. There you go, folks. The end of the match. Few loose screws coming in and absolutely uh, saying we will not be, you know, denied. 12th seed, we don't care. We're good enough to play any of you. <laughs> We're going to take game number one off of Regen Ghost. It was really close. It was a good game both ways, though. I'm quite happy to see it. Let's pop up the talent tree so people can take a look. And, uh,. Anyways, I'm going to be on a will be back screen while we sort out game number two. We'll be right back, folks.
Welcome back to the screen. I wanted to update everybody where we were. Uh, I'm really not happy about them doing that. Uh, they need to actually ask me if I'm ready before starting. So we might miss a little bit of the draft. Anyways, uh, we went to Tomb of the Spider Queen. It was picked up by a few loose screws. His first pick was asked to by uh, Regen Ghost. Um, and so we'll be popping back in to that very shortly. Alrighty, let me bring up the drafts. And so Sylvanas was the first one banned out in this matchup. Um, you know, it, it's always a threat, and they, we saw that when they took bottom keep. Uh, and the mind control follow-up to the Blessed Shield initiation was originally getting them kills. Um, it, it, it probably still could have done so in the late game, but they just missed a couple um, of the combo opportunities. Uh, they got a little bit desperate and weren't quite getting the appropriate combos at the times they needed, and that cost them, unfortunately. But, I mean, it was still a potent combo and definitely worth banning. Um, from the other side, if you're not, if you're not going to be first picking her, I guess, which is a good point. <laughs> Sylvanas is strong on this map, so I mean, it could just be they didn't want to pick it and they don't want them to have it, so let's just remove it. Kalthos was the other side. I was thinking of the wrong team there. Um, who got the bands out? We got Maya of Zeratul, which is pretty common. Zulkin, I assume, is the target man there. Uh, wanting to remove him from some of his impact heroes like Maya and Zeratul, um, both on this map that can be da dangerous for sure. ETC, Jaina is going to be the follow-up to the gray main pickup. So it seems like they don't want Sylvanas, and then they go gray main or vice versa. If they don't want gray main, they're going to go Sylvanas if it makes it through the draft, and that's what the first pick is. Now, we do kind of point out that Johanna was their first pickup last time. Um, we should probably see it again, which we do. And uh, Shriv's going to pick up the Anduin. Uh, Ana was still available, but I guess they feel like they didn't get what they wanted out of that hero, so we're going to default over to Anduin instead. Uh, don't get me wrong, I really do think Anduin is a fantastic healer. I mean, does certain things well, but I do think that a lot of teams haven't quite figured out how to use him to the best of their ability yet. And I think that that's something that can be considered here, at, you know, whenever you're thinking about picking that hero over other options. Ana's been around and kind of in the meta for at least a little bit longer. So generally, players have a bit more experience on the hero. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Blaze is going to get banned out, and I think that that was a good um, thing. Uh, Blaze actually caused them a lot of issues in the last game, and I had very little issue with Shui's play on the hero. Chenton, however, was also equally a problem. Uh, we saw Ragnarok get some fantastic Chen value, uh, especially at the end of that uh, that fight. The the extra dive after the Kerrigan and Stukov initiation was just was too much. It was counter initiation on a pick attempt, but again, the, the DPS just weren't positioned appropriately to really get the value that I'd have liked to have seen in that situation. Lampika's going to pick up the Stukov again, and we're going to get Tychus. Um, I am a, I am a fan of Tychus in the right situations. I will say that Johanna is the toughest tank for him um, of anyone, uh, almost. Uh, you could probably argue things like Garrosh and um, and uh, Anubrak can be a real problem, uh, but blinds during your trait can be a real problem. And if Johanna is very good at timing out her trait, or sorry, her blinds to coincide with Tychus' trait. Uh, can be really good. Plus, she's hard to lock down in one area, and she's got better mobility than than tanks like, say, Diablo, who Tychus generally counters. But with that said, he is very good, and if that is ever down, it's going to still be a painful experience for anyone on the opposing team's side. We're going to see Leoric as the uh, the last pickup there um, into a f really big health bar frontline, as we see. So Zulkin is actually going to switch over to the Junkrat. Cuban Missile is going to play the Greyman. 
I think we have everybody appropriate. Yes. So shout out in the draft. Oh, don't worry about it. That's all I was going to say on the matter. <laughs> uh, just, you know, it, it'd just be nice if I'm kind of let, <laughs> if someone lets me know before starting it so that I can get all my ducks in a row. I, you know, I get it. I don't want to like make everybody late and slow things down dr drastically. I only needed a couple seconds to get things going. So I'll not drag my feet. And as long as people don't start ahead of me, we're all good. <laughs> All right, here we are into game number two. Few loose screws coming up with what many could say as an upset. Uh, in game number one, taking the victory, then the lead over Regen and Ghost in this match. A cash on the Tychus, Ragnarok on the Leoric, DK Salt playing the ETC, Lompico on the Stukov, and the Doctor being played by Jaina. And on the other side, we have Regen Ghost. Shui on the Imperius, Shriv on the Anduin, uh, Zulkin playing the Junkrat, Temple Art on the Johanna, and Cuban Missile playing the Greymane. Yeah. Okay. That's, that is the appropriate way to say it. <laughs> the Doctor is being played by Jaina. We are, we are the puppets. <laughs> Well, this opening handshake being a little bit more interesting here. Kind of. <laughs> Still nothing fully happens there. Actually, the first one from the last game was also pretty good. Trim the Spider Queen kind of, like, appeal, like... It generates a lot more conflict in the early game because of how close these lanes are together and how close each team has to be to each other when they're rotating. It's sort of like like towers of doom except that leans a lot longer so you don't see the rotations quite as frequently um this one just absolutely gets people brawling but a lot of teams spend their time doing their best to kind of avoid each other like it's funny because they, they just dance around the edges because they don't actually want to like get picked off but we are going to see some aggression coming here from dk salt onto temple art i don't know if he's used his trait now he was saving that very well the blind does come out but they did get a lot of pressure onto him johanna dropping pretty low in that fight but again had a big trait had to tap available is just going to heal up it's nice to be able to get the tap early um but that's kind of the thing about johanna is she's going to be hard to pick off in those situations whereas um, Tychus can really pressure other tanks, including things like ETC, by getting any substantial CC onto the target long enough for him to get value out of the trade. Ranger and Ghost going to split off, use their Junkrat and Johanna wave clear capabilities and, you know, ability to not die from good gank rotations. To kind of clear this up while Grayman and Anduin go working on the mercenary camp. They're going to get that out nice and early, and I like early pickups. Um, it, it can help you establish that lane control. Um, if you've got good siege, it can do really good on, uh, you know, getting good mid pressure, which is nice to get those walls down before an objective. Uh, a bit of an engagement does come out onto Zulkin, but he does drop a defensive uh, concussion mine and saves himself some trouble there. Bruiser's actually going to push up onto the wall and do some damage, but it's not being pushed in by Regen Ghost, so it will get cleared up on the rotation from a few loose screws. So early camp not getting as much value as I'd like to see, um, with teams being a little bit more active in trying to get value out of it. Uh, you know, you can generate fights. And, and, and the thing is, people are so afraid to fight pre-5. You know what I mean? Like, they don't like to do it until they hit, like, 10s, basically. Um, unless they have a huge advantage. And I think on this map, you can create advantages nice and early. And early kills might not add up a lot into experience or anything like that. But they can give you good advantages on certain maps that are definitely worth trying to generate. So, we're going to see, actually, a cash trade pretty well into Greymane there. Taking quite a bit of his health down. And uh, walking away without much of a bad trade there. So really good trade by Akash. I was 
quite impressed, impressed with that exchange. Junkrat getting engaged on by DK Salt, but he did probably overextend for that. Um, they do get Zulkin down low, but unfortunately the Doctor had already used his combo. And actually the uh, return kill is going to come back out from the rotation of Regen Ghost. They're going to get... And Jaina might actually be in big trouble here. The dive coming out from Greymane. But he has to walk through a Blizzard to do any extra damage, so he's going to back away. Good pressure, though. And uh, First Blood's going to be Regen Ghost, so the rotation in the end being the victor there. Uh, staying ahead in the experience in the wave clear and then making that fast wave clear rotation allowed them to find an overextended ETC with a low health bar, and that was definitely worth getting the kill for. Um... I still think that they could have bullied this rotation a bit more. And those are kind of like the mid-max areas that you can see some. And my own team doesn't do this enough either. It's like, if you get an early kill like that, you can get positional advantage and make it really hard for them to swap through. The Leap of Faith brings Templar back, but it actually might put him in trouble. But it is ETC with the Junkrat Concussion Mine. Putting him into a terrible spot is going to go down again. And that's going to be kill number two. Uh, again, that's ETC dying twice off of overextending to try to finish off kills that were lofty at best. Like, um, the kill on the Junkrat was not going to happen. They overextended for that. The And in that situation, the, the kill on the Johanna was just not going to happen, and uh, they overextended for that. So um, I did think that the Leap of Faith might have done more harm than good as it kept him in range of the Tychus, but luckily, Tychus was just using his... Um, uh, Q ability? Whatever it's called. Um, so he wasn't going to be able to trait onto Johanna in that situation. But because of those kills on ETC, we're going to see first uh, Webweaver phase go to um, Regen Ghost. And they're going to get a kill onto Jaina, who is a bit out of position. And that's going to be a follow up kill there of Stukov who had also stepped himself out of position trying to keep his team alive. And that's going to be two more kills from Regen Ghost. They are taking no prisoners in this matchup. After a disappointing game number one, they are coming back. We are going to see Ragnarok pop back up. He finally joins the team for kind of the first time I've seen in this match. Imperius doesn't even bother. Um, but unfortunately, he gets caught on the rotation by Regen Ghost and gets punished for it and is stepping back into lane against an Imperius with very little health, and that is not the situation you want to be in as Leoric. As now you can't step up the wave clear without risking death, as Imperius can kill you. We are going to see the rotation come in from... You lose screws, but Shui says, ha, I saw that coming a mile away and just backs out. Doctor, though, is now in a bad spot as they were out of position from that rotation, but Graeme is the one that gets picked off, so the follow-up damage coming in from... Uh, yeah, and that's a great Entomb that lands onto three targets, plus a follow-up Mosh Pit, and much like game number one, we see that Mosh Pit get the value it needs to secure kills, and now... Things have turned on its head again against Regen Ghost. So, I mean, up to this point, I would say they were in a commanding spot in this game. They had tens ahead a whole level. Um, they had a uh, rotational advantage. They basically um, forced a uh, few screws to change rotations to look for picks. But funny enough, that change in rotation also allowed them to find a team fight off the initiation from Jaina. Uh, everyone was not available for that kill, or at least not focused on that kill. They did manage to not get the Jaina there. And uh, and that cost them. Greyman going down, and that was the end of the team fight mostly. When you have big ultimates still available like Entomb and Moshpit. So top forts are going to be traded out. And where Regen Ghost was once ahead, they are now behind. As it has flipped over, the experience lead is now is substantially in the hands of a few of the screws. Um, they traded out the top fort, so they're structurally in a similar position. Though with more front walls and less damage on forts, so I would say they're actually in a better spot.
Now we do have Light Bomb Falling Sword. Again, an interesting build, but requires a lot of late game, and this game can end really quick if you're not careful. We see the Light Bomb come out, but it's knocked back, and it's not timed well with the Falling Sword. Uh, and Tomb's going to come out onto Greymane. The shield has to be popped by Templard as he's getting very low. The follow-up stun is there, but it looks like uh, Johanna is going to die. We still ended up getting a two-man... Um, Mosh Pit onto Shui and Zulkin, which could result in another kill, but some good minds and placement and movement by the enemy, by Regen Ghost, uh, allowed them to get out of that without dying. Oh, I can't refill. Let's pop up the talents. So mid's going to land on this next web weaver phase. Picked up at 13s by Fuel Screws. Good mine on DK Salt, basically to force the power slide out. Here comes the Light Bomb Falling Sword, and now we might actually see the value. And just like that. Regen Ghost flips it around. They get two kills, three kills for nothing. They will save the mid fort for now and should be able to safely clear bottom and top without losing any significant structures. Uh, or not? I mean, they shouldn't be letting the top keep wall go down for free. And we're going to see the rotation finally come out from. Zulkin and Shui. But they're going to lose a well and quite a bit of damage on this keep. Basically just because they did not rotate junk right up there initially, which they probably should have done. Because the bot web weaver wasn't going to get anywhere with Greymane and Johanna on it. But why be critical in a moment where we saw Regen Ghost perhaps reestablish them back into this uh, game? They're 20 away from a turn in. Uh, they took back uh, that huge loss in experience that they did suffer at the hands of Fuel Screws and now pulled within about a half a level, if not a little bit less than. Both camps are going to clash in the middle. It is Ragnarok who gets the initial clear going on it, so one camp is going to be in a weaker spot. Templar pops up, though, with conviction, conviction or con conviction, or condemned. Jeez, what am I talking about? Um, to clear it out. In the end, though, no overcommitments coming out from Regen Ghost. We do see Ragnarok seeing if he can get a good flank position. Um, wanting to see if he can get value out of that Entomb. And here he goes. He's going to drop it right here. We draw, see it land onto Shriv and Zulkin. And uh, it's going to be a mosh pit onto Anduin. But it's DK Salt that goes down as the follow-up damage just wasn't quite in position. We're going to see the Light Bomb plus the Falling Sword come out, land onto three members... And now that's going to be another three for nothing. So Regen Ghost, again, not looking for a repeat of game number one, are actually going to turn these late game fights in their favor and, in fact, start getting the kills where they need them. They have no more forts left, but with that huge four-man kill, um, they can actually stack both Web Weavers and the boss here. Um, I do want to see, you know, uh, Shui go split off and put the gems in. He should go do that right now. Ragnarok's going to spawn here. Uh, I'm not sure about this. They need to make sure that they don't, uh, uh, what do you call it, tether this, which they're not going to. They need to t send Shui to go turn in, and they're going to give up on the boss? I mean, why? I would take a Leoric death for that stall. No doubt about it. So now the situation that goes into an almost checkmate position, boss plus web weavers, um, with four enemy team down, guarantees this keep, guarantees like a huge experience lead. But now bottom's gonna get cleared up mostly by giants. Top might get a keep if we see Regen Ghost get a good combo initiation, but the counter siege is here. We see Odin been popped right away. 
just to guarantee that's the case, and they can't step up into this. And look at that. Few loose screws just get an easy clear on these on this objective. So huge missed opportunity. I think killing the Leoric was perfectly fine, but tethering that boss was the worst possible play they could have made there. Ragnarok able to back off. He does miss with the tomb. It does not land onto anyone. But this mid midweb weaver is almost dead. It's halfway down. Bottom is already cleared up by the giants. We're going to see initiation come out from Shui onto Ragnarok, but that's not going to get anything done. And we see Deco Salt now stepping up to see if he can find a target to kill. Templar is going to turn the page, though. Turn around. We do see Cursed Bullet coming out, but it does miss. Ragnarok losing most of his health. He's in big trouble. Shui does try to go in. No, I guess Cursed Bullet didn't miss. That's what chunked Ragnarok. But anyways. Ugh. But again, no kills. So if you lose screws actually being able to peel out from that, it was really good for them. Uh, a huge advantage window that Ghost had in that situation, more or less just thrown away. Yeah, I, like Ragnarok's, it, the play ended up being really good. I was concerned about it because it got him killed. And uh, had that boss not tethered and they burned that down, that kill on Legnarok staggered in that situation, Leoric or not, was a bad play. But because they tethered the boss, it was a great play and ended up paying off exactly what he got out of the risk. So, I mean, that whole Webweaver phase was completely wasted. They got no boss and uh, all those kills that they did on their side of the map basically turned to nothing. Uh... Fuel is screw still commandingly in the lead here, I'd say. And in fact, they've reestablished their hold on the experience. So <laughs> things uh, looking up for fuel is screws. They are still slightly behind in gem count, but that can be made up pretty quickly here. Um, especially since Regen and Ghost is playing, playing back on their side of the map, which actually is giving up positioning on this turn-ins, which I think is a risky move. Uh, ETC is going to pop up here and ward boss. Just make sure that doesn't happen. Maybe even to see if they can bait ghost into an engagement up here. Um, given their c current situation, I think going for a boss here is risky, but it hasn't been scouted yet by region ghost. We do see Templar making his way up, and the amount of damage they've done so far on this is too low. Oh no, it didn't land, but they still get the mosh pit kill onto Johanna here. That's, uh, yeah, problem with the uh, team being split. He doesn't have Entomb, though, so they can easily peel back from this. But now they do forfeit boss um, to a few of the screws, and they also have turn in. Uh, I'd really like to see them actually set that up, but they have all of their turn in pretty much spread across uh, at least two heroes here. So they're not going to be able to stack these right away, but boss has to be responded to. So they should be able to get it off of the back of a boss. The engagement comes out onto Ragnarok though, and that's 15 gems, which is what they need for the turn in. They don't have enough now. So boss is going to push in. Uh, we're going to see regen ghost go up to clear it. They do now have enough, though. They do. It's 20, so they should be able to turn it in. But that really delays it out. They're probably still going to lose top keep. But they should still be able to mount some sort of defense here. But let's just say this. It's still a, it's still a bad spot for Regen Ghost. Felix Screws has both 20, a boss pushing into the top lane, and Webweavers followed up after this. So if they don't lose all three keeps here, bare minimum, that's going to be kind of a shocker to me. Uh, I'd say uh, a few of the screws missed an opportunity. Um, but really, the danger here is core. Uh, with the next set of web weavers coming in um, and 20s, we can actually see a few of the screws go for core calls here at any moment. And silence and tomb is enough to end this game. So they really have to be watch out for this. Uh, massive shove did get used, but it's a damn short cooldown. So it shouldn't be a huge problem here. Web is going to push up. We're going to get Odin in behind that. A great siege tool. We'll see if he gets the full duration attempt to do it. Templar steps up to see if he can disrupt a little bit, but we do see all of the lanes being pushed in hard. And it is Grayman that gets almost super focused down. I think he walked away with literally 14 health. That's quite insane. We saw Light Bomb come out plus the uh, Fallen Sword. They do get the kill on Jaina, though, so the defense might actually be coming out here. Lompico's going to go down, and this gives me a real problem. We see the Mosh Pit, though, being dropped uh, just to try to keep them. They do get the kill onto Grayman, who should have died, actually. 
actually a long time ago. Uh, we're going to see the follow-up, see if they can actually kill off DK Salts here. Bottom keep is gone, top keep is gone, middle keep is about to go down, but if they can turn this around into kills, they can turn this game around as kind of dire as it's gotten right here. One catapult, though, still on the core. The mid keep is basically dead. <laughs> Region Ghost is still in this game, though, folks. <laughs> And they have a big window to actually turn things around. If they get this kill on Ragnarok, things can actually be pretty bad here. Um, they get a turn in um, and push up top lane. They can get that keep and perhaps even uh, start looking for the end of the game themselves here. But things are desperate for Regen Ghost. Do not get me wrong. They, they are not in a good spot. <laughs> they, they flat out have to get a turn in and actually end off this turn in. And, uh, you know, there's still a call here that can be made by uh, a few loose screws where they can just go core. 35%, they can backdoor this if they can find a way to sneak around through the lanes well enough. Um, and we might actually see them come out onto the map to do that, though they are going to go for the mid clear, which means they can't do anything too sneaky here. And the regen ghost doesn't really care about mid. That, that is a non-concern for them. Uh, bottom lane is the point. All they really want to do is get kills here so they can push up with the thing. And there goes the light bomb into the falling sword. It might actually be enough to get the initiation they need onto Lampico. He goes down. That is a kill. DK Salt, not much better. There goes the angelic armaments to get the pick off. And what we need to see here was Temple Art not die, but he does. Shui is not in any better spot. The Winter's Mute from <laughs> level 20 and the odin are getting the value needed and that's a three for two four for two and i think this might be the end of the game um zulkin doing his best but that's a silence and tomb and he's gonna die and regen ghost what looked like a great start to this is gonna lose and that's gonna be a 2-0 victory for a few loose screws as i said before it was a risky situation to, from the get-go that level 20 from from Jaina did a ton of work in that fight. Oh my gosh. <laughs> GG. Uh, that, both games, one and two, are extremely back and forth. But Fulu Screws, you know, in both games, we saw great control. Um, they made some, like, major errors in certain areas, but they still kind of played the macro well. Um, you knew that they were going to stock the boss and Webweaver, and that was going to be the end of the game. Um, but... I don't think they anticipated Regen Ghost going for that pickoff onto Leoric, which changed the face of the game to some degree. Like, again, they had all of it, boss and web weavers, and that should have been the end of the game. But because Regen Ghost played the defense so well, they were actually able to generate an opportunity. And if that team fight hadn't turned the way it did, and Regen Ghost had been able to get those first two initiation kills and maybe a couple follow up kills without losing anyone, maybe just one hero. Um, that would have made a big difference, but they did initiate underneath the fort. It is what killed off Temple Art. And as soon as he went down, it kind of snowballed against Regen Ghost, and that was the end of the game. So, damn. Both of those sets, or my games, were extremely close, extremely back and forth, and incredibly fun to, to cast. So, those are your talent builds. I'm sure you saw them all game because I always forget to take the damn thing go. But hey, at least I'm for remembering to put up the appropriate overlay every single game. So, We've made progress. Anyways, let's pop me over onto the interview side and we'll see if we can get somebody from Fuelu Screws in here. That is the wrong banner. Let's switch this over. I would have to change it anyways because honestly, coming into this game, I thought this was Regen's Ghost Games or Regen Ghost game to lose. Uh, as given the kind of the position and the performance that we've seen out of them this season, whereas Felix Screws, while have had had some good games, have also had a hard time being very consistent. But I was proven wrong this time around, and uh, I'm quite happy that it was. It was a fantastic set. Let's uh, pop back into the game, see if I can get somebody in.
I mean, I mean, you guys are already in here waiting for me. I'm the slowpoke here. Hello. We're used to dealing with those. Well, I gotta say, guys, I did not come in into this matchup expecting a 2-0 in your favor. So congratulations. Well done. Thank you. And, yeah, uh, it was, and it was convincing. It wasn't like it was like, you know, a f it wasn't, it didn't feel like a fluke victory. It looked like it was extremely back and forth. Both teams in both games had opportunities from start to finish to, to, to come out on top. And uh, you guys just kind of ended up making the better plays in the end more consistently. And I think that's what it all boiled down to. How are you guys feeling about it? Yeah, we're great. Pretty good. I'd like to shout out my personal coach, Slexia, for all of her support. <laughs> And uh, how much she's done for me, and uh, and I also want to shout out Kerrigan from Game One. Like, yeah, she really pulled together that last fight and that really, fight, really I, showed up well for the team. I don't even know how I did it. It felt like I wasn't even pressing my buttons. It was just I became one with the character. Well, I mean, uh, it, it was one of those scary situations because uh, they failed on the pick on ETC. Had they succeeded on the pick on ETC, things could have gone pretty badly for you guys there. But he was managed, you know, was able to peel away because the rotation from you guys was in was in was swift, and the response onto the back line was really good. And then that, uh, yeah, the Kerrigan dive plus the Stukov silence after that uh, made it very difficult for them to be able to survive through the initiation. And you did a well, good job, uh, kind of closing out that fight, which ultimately won the game. I, that's actually a thing that we have practiced. Like it looks like ETC is overextended, but I think it was like game it was like game four. Yeah. This season we we like did it on accident and realized that the the combination of Kerrigan and Chen diving on with the Stuka of Silence after they burned all their buttons on ETC is pretty pretty good. So we we haven't named it. If you have any suggestions, <laughs> I'll think about something. Sure, no problem. Uh, so that's a strategy. You guys dangle the ETC out there for everyone to kind of go on to. Um, do your yeah. best to I mean, support him through and then walk out. Horrible. Yeah. So he's always overextended. So we're just kind of trying to make the best of it. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think that that's true at all. But uh, I mean, did you see Game Six of the season? He was just like on their side the whole, <laughs> the whole time. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes you, you with ETC, you, you just feel so invincible because you generally are. You, you think you can stand anywhere you want. So. <laughs> The best um, part of, of DK's ETC is that he always accidentally picks the talent at level four that lets you go through terrain, which everyone knows is just a shit talent. But like, <laughs> it can and save he doesn't you, mean to do it. He just, I just, I every time I hit the number two because I'm used to playing Lily, like well, he's my main, and I always take the number two talent. So whenever I'm not playing Lily, I just always select. Yeah. I think just that there's so much problem. more utility available for the extended range on the W that that's or is why everyone takes that instead, but. You know, if it didn't have to compete with that, I don't think that power slide over terrain would actually be that bad at all. Especially if you have good vision control, like things like Hanzo or Lunara, where you can kind of scout out rotations. You can get some crazy, probably, mosh pits out of nowhere that no one expects, though, with that talent. So, hey, That's true. I'll defend it. The, the nice thing about the extra knockback on the W is you can make sure that you knock them out of Blizzard before the second wave hits. Like, if you don't <laughs> if you don't get that, then the second wave hits them, and then I get more damage. Hey. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> exactly. We have really been practicing it. It's our only combo. If they had been EGC, it would have been <laughs> yeah. over immediately. In I would have done more damage. In game one, though, do you get, were you guys caught a little bit uh, by surprise by the Blessed Shield mind control? Um, we did not expect mind control. I don't think that's most people sure. do. I mean, that's straight no, up not to pick, generally I mean, speaking. I think, like, on, a, on an ontological level, if you expect mind control, it actually isn't mind control. Yeah. yeah. I think that's true. We, we've de you should check out our podcast. We've delved into the <laughs> philosophical side of uh, talents and seeing how people pick them. I mean, feel free to plug to your you. podcast. I don't care. <laughs> Go for it. Um... We we definitely weren't expecting that though. I I don't know like what the what their plan was. I would be curious to know because it it worked, but it didn't feel like it was okay. We're gonna mind control the Kerrigan or the ETC. It was sort of like we're gonna mind control whatever's there. Yeah. Um. I mean, it, it still worked, but I would think that like a silence on a diving Kerrigan would also hit ETC and Chen and would do a job pretty well too. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, I was a little bit concerned uh, in uh, game number one as they did have very good siege or push pressure with Sylvanas Rainer. 
Um, I do feel it was underutilized by them in a lot of the situations where they could have pressured you while you were focused on other objectives on the map. Um, but uh, game number two is a bit of a different story. You guys seem to have really kind of nailed down the the uh, macro control quite a bit. And uh, despite getting to some hairy situations from perhaps overextending onto the enemy side's map, you never really fell that f uh, far enough behind in, in your positioning on the map um, to really be threatened by anything that they could bring back at you, even after getting those kills. The, the reason I really like Tomb is that like the terrain is all so dark and similar that you can't really tell whose side of the map you're on. So <laughs> I feel like it, it kind of like lets me not have to worry about my positioning anymore, um, which their gray main noticed, and he, he appreciated that as well. <laughs> well I'm just there obsessed you go. with no GTs at the end of the game. That's all I have to say. There it's wasn't? Huh. I didn't Only notice by that. Us. Hmm. I'm upset. Hmm. Hmm. Like a written formal apology sent to my address. <laughs> <laughs> do they do they have mail in Canada? Of course. Um, not yet, but what you can okay. do is yeah. if you walk to the border and just put it on the other side, eventually <laughs> someone will pick it up and bring it to the right person. Because like you know, numbers. we all know each other. Right. That makes sense. Sure. Um, I was really impressed by the Falling butter knife, uh, Anduin boom boom combo. Like I didn't know that worked that way. Broken. Yeah. Like, I mean, she can jump in the air with the bomb on her, and it still goes off. Yeah. Which means it's like an infinitely vertical bomb, even though it's like a pretty small horizontal width. Timing still has right. to be pretty good on that. Um, as we saw, they did get a good one at the end there. But they also failed a couple of the combos too as well that, that cost them a few of those fights. So um, it is definitely one of those things where like call out timings have to be like on. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. don't get them on, it's just going to look stupid and not work. <laughs> but uh, it got a, scary there at the end. <laughs> that's why we don't go like uh, ring mosh because then it requires coordination and like DK and I have played several teams together, and we know that like that's not happening. So basically, he's just garbage. Yeah. He, can't, he can't line up the circle with the other circles, and it's really freaking it hard. Just goes right? poor, really poorly. Yeah, there are so many circles. My other, my W is a circle. You know, Stukov makes a circle. I, I just get overwhelmed. Joking aside, you still land. It landed about two moshes per game that were very impactful and definitely turned a lot of the turn the 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 match around so I, I would say that it did succeed in getting off a lot of that and as long as the follow-up damage is there you know it, it doesn't have to be a big wombo it doesn't have to be a huge you know uh ability it just has to be everyone coordinated on on similar targets and um i would probably argue that that is one of the things i felt you guys did better in the last game like i said there was opportunities where they did land those combos like maya blessed shield or, or sorry mind control blessed shield and uh, had Region Ghost been positioned appropriately, uh, ETC would have died in those situations. But because they yeah. weren't, it, it, you guys were able to get in the abilities you needed to, to stop the, the kill from coming through and turn the fight around. Um, and that's what you guys did yeah. all uh, in both games very well. I, you know That with the macro, um, I was impressed. You guys played a good set. I think throughout the season, we've like realized that Basically, we can all just kind of twiddle our thumbs for 15 minutes and then DK will land a mosh and we'll win the game. I mean, that's the thing about ETC, right? And why it's been banned a lot this season. Anyways, um, um, congratulations yeah. on the victory over the number five seed. Uh, does this get you guys any chance of hitting the playoffs? I haven't really done the math yet. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have or not. <laughs> we, have a, we have a pretty broad roster, so I think it depends on like who's playing because definitely there's a pretty big... Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for like skill spread on the team. So okay. we're all pretty busy. Uh, I think tonight we definitely were showing some of our our stronger play. So so maybe. Well, I would hope to see it, and I think with the victory over the number five seed, you can make an argument for it. Um, this does yeah. move you up in that the was standings. Number five seed. Yeah. Sorry, I don't. That's, I didn't know. Yep. Do they have tact in Canada? <laughs> no, we don't have internet. I have to fly to Detroit for these games. <laughs> Motor City. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Anyways, floor is yours for shoutouts, guys. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to shout out my cat, Bandersnatch. He's been with me for a really long time, and I uh, I just want to say that I love him. Uh, shout out to the team. I feel like we've all grown 
really close together over the season, which has been fun. Um, and to my partner, Cassandra, uh, for supporting me. And shout out to uh, DK's Moshes. And to Regen, what was their team? Regen Ghost. Ghost. Yep. For being awesome. And to you for casting. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for joining right. me. Have a wonderful night. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Bye. Wait. What? Alrighty, folks. Thank you for showing up uh, to the match tonight. I appreciate it. I came in on my birthday to enjoy some time with you all and to uh, enjoy this cast here. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Both teams played very well. I was uh, I, I really liked both games. They were an absolute joy to cast. Um, if you're feeling generous, uh, if you haven't already, please hit the follow button. And, uh, of course, uh, subs, biddies, and or uh, anything in the uh, tip jar would, is, is welcome and appreciated. So um, you can follow me uh, and see these VODs here on YouTube. Uh, following it later, I'll see if there's someone I can host. But I am one of the last matches of the night, so I don't think there will be anybody left over. Um, again, thanks for coming, everybody, and have a good night.